All right, we're on part four of our Game Maker game, and uh, I just wanted to just start off with this. We've got our asteroids pretty much working. There's only one problem. There's like no no real actions happening, right? We got asteroids moving around. We can fire bullets, but we can like just basically drive through asteroids and bullets do nothing. So what we're going to do in today's tutorial is we're going to make those bullets blow stuff up, okay? Not only are we going to make them blow up, but when we hit one of these big asteroids, it's going to break off into two smaller asteroids. We're going to use a concept called inheritance, and it's going to simplify our coding. And then we also want to make it so if we collide with an asteroid, the game is going to restart. Okay. So let's go ahead and get to this. The first thing we want to do is make those bullets count. And we're going to focus most of our code on the asteroid. And the reason why is it has to do with inheritance. Okay, and what has to do with inheritance, I think you'll learn as I go about making this. So the first thing I want to do is go to the object asteroid. This object has a little bit of behavior right now. We have, when it creates, it basically picks a random image from the three sub-images, picks a random direction, picks a random speed, so that each of the asteroids are going at different rates. They look a little different. And so that makes it interesting. If we get outside of the room, we wrap around. So what we want to do now is do a thing called collision. So we're going to add an event, and it's collision event. So the first thing we're going to do is if it collides with a bullet, we want the asteroid to be destroyed. And then we also are a little bit later going to make it turn into two other asteroids. But we also want to destroy the bullet. In order to do this, I kind of want to go over two general ideas. Number one, I want you to understand what's up with a thing called collision mask, because this determines the area of where it gets hit. And the other thing I want to do is talk a little bit about like why we're putting all of the stuff in the asteroid. So when we collide with the bullet, we want to destroy the instance. And so I'm going to use the destroy instance drag and drop. Okay. Now, that's over on the side here. It's under instances. It's this one here, the one that has a trash can with a little dot inside. A little dot represents an object. So we drag it out. Destroy instance. Now, there are some options here. When we go to destroy an instance, we could destroy itself, which I think that's what we do want to do. When we're referring to self, we're referring to the object, which is object asteroid. Other, right here, refers to the bullet, okay? If I were to do all, it would just end everything, okay? We wouldn't want, I don't know why, when you would want to do that. Let's, let me just show you what happens if I do object asteroid, because you might be tempted to go, oh yeah, we want to destroy the asteroid. So if you select that under destroy instance, see how it's selected? Watch what happens when I hit one asteroid. You might be able to guess it. Hey, come up, come over here. Hey, there we go. So I hit one asteroid; they all go away. That is not what we want. No. Not at all. Not at all. All right. So what we want to do is other. Other means destroy the bullet, but we also want to destroy the asteroid. So we're going to drag this out again, and this time we're going to use the default. The default is destroy self. Let's go ahead and test it out. We're going to hit run now. The destroy instance other stops the bullet from going through the asteroid. Okay, so the moment the asteroid hits uh, the bullet or the bullet hits the asteroid, it goes away. Okay, see how that works? But the bullet doesn't go through it because we want to destroy the bullet also. That's why we destroyed the other. The other is what it's colliding with. The other is this right here, object bullet. Self is the object over here that we're programming. Hopefully that makes it uh, make, that makes sense. Okay. So now we want to make it so if the asteroid collides with the player, we restart the game. So I'll show you that. You click on Add Event. It's collision. You see the two arrows pointing at each other. It's because they've collided, right? And we're going to choose collision with the object player. So when we when the asteroid collides with the object player, we're going to restart the game. Now, in drag and drop, that's towards the bottom. 
So you go on the right-hand side on the toolbar box, and you scroll down almost to the very bottom, game. You'll see this one that says game. This is it, restart. That's restart the game. That's end the game or exit the game. You actually have one where you can save the game and another one where you can load a saved game. It's pretty cool, huh? But we're going to do restart the game. So we're going to drag this over. So by colliding with the big asteroid with the ship, when the asteroid collides with the ship, we restart the game. Let me show you what that looks like. So we're going to run it, and we're going to let an asteroid hit the ship. And of course, they're all moving away from the ship, which is kind of annoying. So I have to actually run into an asteroid. Um, here we go. Now watch what happens. Now, the, the game restarted before the asteroid actually touched the ship. And that looks kind of weird, if you notice. Okay? And I noticed those things. So, what's going on? In order for you to understand what's going on, we need to talk a little bit about the collision event. Now, the collision event is based on the sprites themselves. So, let's go into the sprite window, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay? Open up your sprite for the asteroid, for example. Actually, let's do the player first. I'm going to edit the sprite for the player. Okay, so we're in the sprite mode. And on the left-hand side, you'll see this thing called collision mask. I'm going to drop this down. Now, the moment I click on it, did you notice what happened to the sprite? It's a little darker. Let me take that off. When it, we're not selecting it, it's lighter. When I select it, it gets dark. The dark area is what's called the collision mask. This is the part that's activating a collision. So there's all this area up on the right top, bottom right, and in the middle on the left where there is no graphic, yet it's still triggering a collision. So to change that, you go under mode. No, not under mode. You go under type. Notice it says rectangle. It says fast because it's easier to process. If you scroll down, there's ellipse, so it makes it basically a circle, which you can edit the ellipse if you want. This is good. This might be good for the asteroids. But notice it says it's slow and it, because it takes a little more processing time to do it. But check out precise. Precise will be exactly the shape of our object. And I'm going to just go with this one for my ship. And let's do it for the asteroid now. You double click on the asteroid so you're editing the asteroid sprite. Click on the collision mask. Now there's an is issue with the collision mask because you have three sub images. Each one is a different shape. So watch our options here now. Ellipse. This is a good one because see how it's an ellipse. It should cover most of the sprites. So this might be a good one. This is probably easier than, ex than precise. Now if I do precise like this, it's going to do precise, but based on all three of the images. So it's like you just put each image on top of one another, and that becomes the mask. That's actually not bad. That's pretty good. If you look at each individual sprite, you'll see there's some areas outside of the shape. That's a collision. So you could do a precise per frame. Now, the problem with this is that means for one sprite, we have three different collision masks. That does make a higher processing time but it makes it really precise. So it's up to you what you want to choose. I'm going to go with full precision. Now, if I find my game is laggy, I may have to change the frame rate or I might want to change my collision mask. Now I'm going to play it and look at the difference when the asteroid comes near my ship. Of course, I need to go near an asteroid for this to happen. Okay, here we go. So we got this asteroid coming over here and I kind of turn and it doesn't actually trigger that collision until it exactly touches the sprite. So it's a lot more accurate. It's a lot more precise. But it does cost the program. Your computer has to compute more information to get that to work. So there is a trade-off. Okay, so at this point, you should have most of this working. So what we're going to do is we're going to have it when we hit the big asteroid, we're going to make a small asteroid. And we're going to use a thing called inheritance, which means the little asteroid is going to have the big asteroid as its parent, and it will get all of the same behavior of the big asteroid. Okay? But before we do that, we need a sprite. So I need you to make another sprite exactly like you did the sprite asteroid, 
only, in this case, you're going to make it half the size so it's smaller. So you're going to right click on the sprites, click create sprite, and just what I recommend you do is call it SPR Asteroid Mini. Okay, that way it's the same naming convention as the big one. You just added mini at the end to, at the end to indicate it's smaller. And under size, click the little resize and change this to 32 by 32. Click apply. So notice the width and the height is now 32. Now for this to work right, we have three sub images or three frames for the big asteroid. We need three frames for the little asteroid. And what you're going to do now is edit the image and in each of these image frames, draw a slightly different asteroid. So go ahead and open that up and draw your three different asteroids. I'll come back um, from this video uh, and when I'm done drawing those. Okay, for time's sake, I'm just going to leave mine like it is over here. Um, three different possible mini asteroids, all at the basic uh, 32 by 32. Our collision mask, I'm going to go ahead and do what I did before. You know what? They're a smaller size, so I think I might just try um, I might just try the rectangle. Might as well. All right? They're smaller, a little bit harder to see that area where it overlaps. All right, so at this point, we got our sprite for the mini asteroid, and what we want to do is we want to avoid doing a lot of extra work. Okay, if we already have an asteroid that has all this functionality, and basically all we want is a smaller asteroid, but behaves the same as the big one, we're just going to create a new object and set the asteroid as the parent. So here's what you do. You right click on objects, you create your object just like you did before, give it a name. I'm going to follow the same way I did the sprite. I'm going to put uh, asteroid mini. And so now it'll be OBJ Asteroid Mini. And I'm going to choose the sprite, which is the Sprite Asteroid Mini. All right. And now I'm not going to add my events in here. Instead, I'm going to click Parent. So I click Parent on this. So this is the mini one, and I want the parent to be the full-size one, Object Asteroid. See that? Now watch what happens. The moment I set the object asteroid as its parent, suddenly all the events from the parent pop up in the screen. Now I haven't touched any events or actions in my mini object, but watch what happens when I put the mini objects in a room. So I go to the room game, and I'm just going to drag out ob asteroid, object asteroid mini. I'm just going to drag out a few of these so you can sort of see them. Okay, and now I'm going to run it. I didn't code it at all. I just let it run. I drop them into the room, and yet they're still behaving like the other main asteroids. All right, so that's pretty good. All right, we can shoot them, and now they get destroyed, but there's one last behavior I want. I want to make it so we start with big asteroids. If I had a big one, I want it to spawn into two smaller ones. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go back to the parent asteroid. And I am going to, in my collision with the bullet, I'm going to add another piece of code. And in this case, we're just going to run the GML. We're going to run execute code. So go ahead and drag out that execute code. Drop it here. I'm going to center it. And now I'm going to close this, get it nice and big. In fact, I'm going to full screen this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like we did with the bullet. And the execute code is we're going to spawn two smaller asteroids. Okay. And to do that, it's instance create layer. Now notice at the bottom it says instance create layer. We need to give it X, Y, the layer ID or name, and an object. So the X is going to be the X and the Y of the asteroid. So it's the asteroid's big, the, the big asteroid's X and Y. Okay, because remember, we're dealing with object asteroid, right? And then we have to choose the layer. That's the instances layer. So in double quotes, just put instance, instances. 
Now, I better double check what's it called. It, yeah, it's instances with an S. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and delete these smaller ones while I'm at it. So I delete the small ones. It's hitting the big ones that create the small ones. So I go back to the object asteroid. I go back to the collision with the um, collision with the uh, bullet. There we go. I'm like, <laughs> all right. So this is the collision with the bullet, and then we have to choose the object, right? So we do object underscore. So we're going to create an object asteroid mini, like so. Okay. So this creates one smaller asteroid, and this is going to create another smaller asteroid. Uh, Same thing. I could have just done copy and paste. Okay, and there we have it. Execute code. We spawn two smaller asteroids. Now, watch what happens when I test it out. See if you can guess what's going to go wrong. Let's go back to the... Remember, guys, my asteroid mini... My asteroid mini um, actually inherited all of these events because it made the object asteroid its parent, right? So... That includes spawning new smaller ones, so watch what happens when I play this game. Now, you may want this game mechanic. Um, I'm just going to start just kind of like randomly shooting bu bullets everywhere. Um, and then watch what happens. The more I shoot bullets, the more asteroids appear. Now, you might like that, but uh, actually it makes for an interesting game mechanic. But I technically don't want it to do that. I want to basically get to the part where I can shoot all of the asteroids and not have more keep appearing. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. But for you to understand how this works and the inheritance, you really should understand another part, which is called override. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to override what the parent is doing. You see how it's kind of grayed out? I'm going to add the same event again. I'm going to do a collision with the object bullet. Now, anything I do in here will be different from the parent. So the way I want to make it different is just to destroy the instances of both itself, right there, and I want to destroy the instance of the, par of the other, which is the bullet. And I'm not going to do anything else. And so if we go ahead and run it now, when we run it, it should just work as far as destroying itself and it won't create new asteroids once I do that and see it worked okay so that basically is towards the end now there's some modifications you could do a uh, really cool modification might be like the original asteroids where you have three different asteroid objects a big a medium and a small and the medium maybe you could make it spawn four of the small asteroids and then on the small asteroid, just do what I did here instead, all right, and make the object be the ob object asteroid parent. So at this point, I'm basically done with this tutorial. Now, I may come back and do another one on scoring and displaying text on a screen and some of that stuff, uh, but don't hold your breath. I may not get around to it until next year. So at this point... You probably know enough about Game Maker. I bet you could figure it out on your own. I believe in you. So stay tuned. Be on the lookout for more Game Maker Studio 2 videos. Thanks for watching. <laughs>